I'm outside the Louis Vuitton store, the one that had its windows smashed and more than 40 people rushed in to grab stuff. The thief stole almost $200,000 worth of merchandise from this store. What happened here in San Francisco is just one example of how the pandemic has completely turned this city upside down. I just walked into this store and it seemed like there was a robbery moments ago. Now, everywhere you look in this area, you'll see police. <laughs> Of all the bull that has destroyed our city. Many businesses can't keep up and are shutting down here. Payless Shoes. Barney's the department store. Just a bank. Walgreens, Verizon. The hottest job in San Francisco right now seems to be private security guard. This Apple store behind me has three security guards inside. Then if you look over there across the street, you have two police officers who have ads for Gucci right here. But then all of these buildings are for lease, for lease, for lease. I've never in my life seen so many vacant spaces. And office occupancy rates are the highest in the country. Airbnb's CEO is saying the most talented people are not in San Francisco anymore. All the offices shut down. Like, I'm remote. Okay. Like, I shouldn't even be here. But even near the tourist areas, just across the street from Fisherman's Wharf, you have a lot of stores and restaurants that are now just completely boarded up. The city is dealing with a massive homeless crisis and a city population in decline. I've never seen anything quite like this and not just the homelessness but the mental health and it really makes you wonder how is this California how is this the United States this is a consequence of the sun and the progressive political policies of the city I'm here to understand how one of the richest places on earth has turned into this and what happens next do you think like in a year things will get better Mass tech exodus. San Francisco, the number of people living in their cars or on the streets increased by 17%. The Bay Area tech exodus. The market will be allowed to work from home instead. The exit highlights one of the big challenges San Francisco is having as it banks on big name companies and their workers returning to the office. San Francisco neighborhood where crime is getting so bad. Louis Vuitton were looted and vandalized. People put up with New York City's problems just because like the upsides are so good as well. Yeah. And I, I don't think people see those upsides here. Every single store, every single store has at least one private security guard. Equinox. It's a luxury gym with locations in New York, LA, and Miami. Here in San Francisco, its flagship location remains barely used. And they've had to hire their own security guard to stand outside. It's a rare sight considering this gym is only usually in the wealthiest areas. Meanwhile, the Amazon Go store, where you use your phone to to swipe in and just walk out has had to hire a security guard. Yet the whole point of this store is to be humanless. The cashier at Walgreens told me that it's gotten worse the past couple of months and the security guard helps a lot, she says, but sometimes they still have issues. Walgreens said that crime at its stores in San Francisco are about four times higher than the average. It's now actively closing stores here. This Walgreens behind me is still open, but just look at its neighbors, closed, Close. It's quite interesting how you see ads over here for brands like Gucci and then over here you see all of this real estate is actually vacant for lease. No businesses are there. Meanwhile, this Ross store is staying open. I just walked into this store and it seemed like there was a robbery moments ago. The woman was describing to the police every item that was stolen and the police seem like they've gotten a lot of these calls. Typically with a scooter like this, you just use an app and unlock it and you're good to go. But now they've actually had to add these extra level of security so people don't just grab them and take them. Hundreds of scooters have been stolen and gone missing. This same scooter company in LA does not require users to chain lock their scooter. If you look at this street corner in Union Square, you have Barney's behind me, which is gone. You have this major space, which is now empty. In front of me over here, you have Crate and Barrel, which is gone. And then the only one left in the corner is Macy's, which is open as of now. It's kind of interesting to me because it's kind of known that if a Starbucks location closes, they will pretty much overnight remove the signage because it just looks bad for a business to be seen that it didn't survive, that it shut down. So it's interesting that some of these businesses here haven't even bothered to take down their signage. If you go to some of the touristy areas like Pier 9 and Fisherman's Wharf, you do see signs of restaurants and stores reopening. In fact, things feel somewhat normal, at least sort of. I remember coming here as a kid to Fisherman's Wharf and it used to be packed. You used to come get a clam chowder, maybe it was in a bread bowl, all on this street. I remember very specifically it was this street and now there's just very little sign of life. It's at least good 
to see that the one business that is in business is actually doing pretty well, it seems. Still today, one in 16 people here are at risk of some sort of crime happening to them, making it more dangerous than 98% of other cities in this country. A few blocks away from Union Square, where that Louis Vuitton is, along with a Gucci and Bloomingdale's, I come to this area. If you search this neighborhood online, it says it's a gritty underground place with art spaces and cool concert venues. But today, that's far from the vibe. It amazes me that just turning one corner and you're really in a whole new world. Today, it's even labeled as a state of emergency. More than 1,000 people have died from drug overdose. Many of those occurrences here in this neighborhood. I've never seen anything quite like this and not just the homelessness, but the mental health. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm making more videos like this. San Francisco is sort of in this loop right now. See, the city's success is largely depending on workers. Before the pandemic, there were hundreds of thousands of people commuting every single day from nearby cities to come to their office. New York and Washington DC are similar, but when you suddenly lose those people who used to come, restaurants, dry cleaners, stores, suffer. It's stuck in this cycle where workers don't want to come partially because of what's happening here. And what's happening here is partially happening because workers aren't coming. But in terms of like coming to downtown, there's like no re real reason anymore. This is the middle of the work week. This is the middle of the work day. It's about 12 o'clock. You would expect to see people having lunch, visiting businesses. Most businesses are closed because most people are not coming. Four out of five CEOs say they've already downsized their office space here, or they're planning to. And almost 25% of the office space here is currently vacant, a record amount of empty desks. Some companies are like really adamant. Google is for sure like everyone has to come two days a week. Uh, there's a lot of companies, smaller companies that are doing the same, uh, but I think like half of the employees will be like, no, we're not coming back. If the offices leave, office workers leave, it's like kind of becomes a ghost town. As opposed to like you go to New York City, Midtown still has like a lot of people walking around. The city is now changing as a result of it. Like I noticed less of a tech presence. Before the city was like all like all like techies. Like anywhere you go, it's like you see groups of like young, urban, like you know, recent grads kind of enjoying their newfound wealth, spending it everywhere. You don't see that anymore. But the scary part about all this comes down to money. You see, the government needs money to pay for things like the police, and the government relies on taxes to generate that money. But the city's sales tax revenue dropped about 70% in 2020, and San Francisco expects to get more than $1 billion each year just from business taxes. But when businesses leave, so does the money. Maybe the city grew faster than it should have. The tech industry completely made living here unaffordable for most. It propelled this area to one of the world's most expensive. See, San Francisco first gained popularity at the gold rush of the 1850s. Since then, it's grown steadily with bursts of people, immigrant surges, the dot-com boom of the 1990s, then the tech boom over the past 20 years. It's been attracting the world's visionaries. San Francisco and the area became the hottest place for tech, but with billions of dollars it brought, home prices surged, making it impossible for the average person to live, and pretty much abolishing any sort of middle class. In fact, tension drew dramatically between these new techies and local residents as the city transformed. All of this was until COVID. I hope it now grows at like a steady pace so that like all these different markets don't overheat. The city feels more comfortable and the government has more of a chance to like build for that future. By many measures, San Francisco is the most expensive place to live in the U.S. California's Realtor Association says you need at least $338,000 of annual income every year to live. That's more than six times the amount of the average income for an American. This is also considered to be one of the most liberal cities in the country. This is a consequence of the sun and the, pro and the progressive political policies of the city. But critics of the government blame the city's progressive politics that don't do enough to punish crimes and drug abuse. I'm hoping that whatever changes the government needs to make, whether it's to the bylaws or to the policies, um, they will do so. Car break-ins have surged a crazy 750% from May 2020 to May 2021. When I used to have a car here, my car got broken into. There was nothing in there. They just broke in to look, to open the, the back seat to look in the trunk. 
because I think everyone kind of expects there's going to be a MacBook. And if you think this is bad, consider this. Most people I speak to here actually say they think things are improving. But hold up, it's not like everywhere is chaotic and everywhere is crime ridden. I'm walking in this local neighborhood right now and it's beautiful. Homes are intact. It's a beautiful neighborhood. Of course, this is a wealthy neighborhood. They have ways of dealing with issues, with crime, with the homeless crisis. Of course, there's barely any people here, but that could just be the nature of the street. Uh, I think it's getting better. Uh, people are coming back. Sure, it's boarded up, but I think uh, I think people are coming back. What is it like? I mean, it seems like COVID has hurt San Francisco a lot. It did, uh, but I think it's definitely recovering. It's opened up a lot. In the past, what? the lobby is quite packed. I will say I have not seen an office building lobby so crowded in a while. Some even say the tech exodus is a good thing. The fact that everyone left and it's not as attractive gives the city a little bit of room to kind of make up for all this lost capacity in housing and transit. So if the future of San Francisco rides on whether office workers will return, let's go to this company, Salesforce. This company has the most amount of employees out of any other company here. They've built this one point one billion dollar campus over a couple years before the pandemic started. Before the pandemic, only about 20% of its employees were working from home, but now the CEO says, okay, 50 to 60% can work from home. And that has great implications because remember, a lot of these workers, a lot of these employees don't actually live in San Francisco. They commute in from outside of the area, which means stores, restaurants, shops here are all impacted. I do see the signs of life, that people have come back, the lobby is busy, and people are coming in and out on the regular. Now Salesforce is telling most of its employees they need to come back to the office at least a few days a week. But of course the trend of work in general is going toward more freedom and flexibility and less time in an office. 61% of Americans that are still working remotely say they would choose to stay remote. And that's twice as much as 2020, which means people are more comfortable and most just don't want to go to an office. Right now a lot is like closed. But it, you can see it slowly opening, so I think as people see it, they're going to want to come back. There's no way of telling what the projection is, Can't, but I'm, we can only remain optimistic about hopefully that these shops and retails um, will be filled again with new ones. I don't think it would ever come back to the same, but just like how San Francisco has changed every 10 years for the last 150, 160 years, I think it will be something different. And I think the vibrancy will be different, but I think there's too much draw to the heart of the city. Yeah. I've realized that San Francisco is at a crossroads. It's highly depending on workers coming back to the city to fix itself, to break this cycle. So my question is this, can San Francisco be saved?